Vertical slice architecture has everything to do with business capabilities, nothing to do with a monolith or microservices or clean architecture or hexagonal and ports and adapters, none of that. Business capabilities. So what's a business capability? I think most people really do know this. If you think about an organization, it's just their ability to execute successfully some type of business activity. In other words, it's really just defining the what. What would you say you do here? The problem with this diagram is solely focusing on the technical concerns of what we're trying to do. Vertical slices, again, is about capabilities. That's not to say that we're ignoring kind of the technical concerns. This could be a monolith. This could be microservices. That's not really the point here. What we're really trying to describe of taking this slice out is we want to take a slice of capabilities. Before I jump into some examples, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So to start exploring business capabilities, you just want to keep digging, basically. If we're thinking about transportation in that domain, sure, there's that, but in an organization, it's other things like HR, finance, and accounting. So if we were to dig into HR and take it a level deeper, what do we have? Well, we have things like compensation and benefits. We have our recruitment and hiring. We have education and training. If I were to dig into recruitment and hiring, we would see things like screening, our evaluation process, what our interviewing and that process looks like, how we deal with our offers for employment, the list goes on and we could take these even further. If I looked at interviewing, I'd probably see all the things that entail to that, all the capabilities that are involved in our interviewing process. And you'll notice I've been using the word process a little bit here, like the hiring process or the recruitment process, because they're business processes. That's a part of these business capabilities. I haven't been talking about entities. And in my opinion, a lot of the systems that are noun and entity driven that are more focused on that than the actual capabilities are brittle systems that you often hear are really hard to change, primarily because of coupling. I know, big shocker, coupling is a problem, but this is what ultimately ends up happening is think about our user service. And it has everything to do with a user in our system, whether it's a user that logs in, an employee, everything needs or relates and it needs access to the user service. So we have all this coupling to our user service. If anything changes with it, we're likely going to affect or potentially break any other service that we have because everything's dependent upon it. You don't need one model to rule them all, meaning you don't need one model or one concept that exists only in one singular place, like a user, some God object here. There's going to be different vertical slices within your system that sure relate to a user, but that have different concerns. You don't need one concept to only exist in one place. So let's use a really simple example. Let's say you order a product online and you want to get that product shipped to your house. There's a whole lot of business processes and capabilities going on there. There's the actual act of ordering, but let's say we get beyond that and it's just actually shipping that product to your home. How does all that happen? Well, without getting into the nitty gritty of it, there's a lot of workflows and a lot of business processes. The first thing that actually has to happen is dispatching it to a vehicle and a driver so that product gets picked up from wherever its location is and gets delivered to your home. And an awesome example of this are with events. So let's say that the truck arrived at the warehouse to pick up the product. When the act of that happens, what happens in our system? Do we just change a record? Do we just update some record of, okay, here's the bill of lading? That's all it is, because this is what we're going to derive from this, is that a shipment change, here's the shipment ID, and here's the bill of lading. No, not really, because there's a lot of reasons why the bill of lading could change. Maybe it's after the fact. Maybe when it's when the actual item was picked up from the shipper. Data like this in CRUD is not explicit. You have no idea what the capabilities are, because really all you're exposing is CRUD. All the workflows at this point, then, are simply in the heads of the users ultimately operating in your UI, performing the CRUD. Rather, if you actually had the act, which you really would in this industry, is you would actually have a pickup um, at a particular stop and to find that that was loaded, that the freight was loaded, that the item you ordered was lo loaded onto the truck with the shipment ID, what the stop was, when that occurred, the bill lading, maybe some other notes. Same thing when the truck departs or when the truck arrives at your actual final des uh, destination, you have some type of proof of delivery. 
This is all workflows. We're all talking about capabilities here. So when I'm talking about vertical slices, that's what I'm talking about. The vertical slices of business capabilities. In my illustration of kind of executing a shipment, there's a long business process that could potentially occur there. It's not just entities and updating and having a shipment service. That's not really the way it works. It's that having certain actions that are grouped together because that's what they form is that business process of executing a shipment. So that's why I said at the very beginning that comparing it to a monolith, microservices, clean architecture, none of this actually makes sense because what we're focused on is grouping by capability. One of the benefits of doing that is that then you can decide within that vertical slice, depending whatever it is, you can decide, oh, okay, this vertical slice, we might be exposing some HP API. We just have some underlying data around that, no domain model. Another part of that may be just purely message and reactionary driven async. It has a rich domain model with it. Maybe another one, we have an HP API. And why I say mon not a monolith, not microservices, it's because we're thinking about this logically. You may have a mobile app that's a part of one particular vertical slice. That could be in a complete, written in a completely different language in a completely different repository. That's still a part of it. That's still a part of the vertical slice. But vertical slices doesn't magically solve all life's problems and all life's complexities here in our systems. That's not it at all. It's just we're really focusing on cohesion around those business capabilities. That's our driver you're still gonna have coupling between vertical slices. How you choose to have that coupling is a whole different topic. But you'll notice there's really not really been anything uh, technical about coupling between layers and all that stuff. That's not really at, at it at all. You are gonna have workflows likely that will span different vertical slices. You may be using something like messaging and event-driven architecture to try as a way to communicate between these boundaries in an asynchronous way to kind of remove that temporal aspect, but you still have coupling. I'll have a link at the end of this video that kind of describes that a little bit more. But focusing on entities and that being your primary driver instead of business capabilities, to me is the easiest way to have a system that's highly coupled with low cohesion. But can you use vertical slices and CRUD? Sure, within a vertical slice where CRUD actually makes sense. But if you're just doing it everywhere, then you're really not doing it because you're really not focused on capabilities. And if you watch some of my other videos, you know I'm teetering on the line here of talking logical versus physical, which I won't get into. But if you do want to get into it and go a little bit deeper, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server where you can chat with other developers about software architecture and design and topics like this. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.